am from, originally from Finland. I am operating in America uh, as a professor at the uh, Illinois uh, Institute of Technology in Chicago. I have been there for a long time, and uh, it's a good place for me to be because I'm a sociologist of science, and I, I also have gotten into architecture, so I can do all these kinds of things. And it's interesting for me, and I am an explorer, so I explore also education in those fields. But I thought I should talk about Finland. This was a... Uh, uh, somebody mentioned that at the first uh, fireside chat. Uh, I am not a specialist on the present Finnish education, but because I am from Finland, I have read up on it. And I was, I'm trying to give you some kind of pointers. And I think some of them actually relate to what Stefan Brunhuber and other people said in this session. Um, and uh, uh, I'm just trying to be fast now here. So uh, I have been reading up on the World Economic Forum, because I have been writing articles about education recently and gone to conferences. And uh, I found, to my great, great surprise, last year I found an article called 10 Reasons Why Finland's Education System is the Best. I thought to myself, whoops, that's good to know. And what are we doing there? What are they doing? I do not have direct connections right now to educators, but I have been looking at newspapers and uh, asked friends, and I've collected some articles. So I know a little, and I think, I can tell you what I know. So, uh, there was a big brouhaha about uh, Finland being first in uh, some PISA evaluations around 2000 or 2001. And it was like very surprising because Finland is a very small country, five million uh, inhabitants or so. Uh, so, like what were we doing right? What were they doing right there? And so there was an immediate investigation <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, about the educational system and it's indeed true that there has been a, 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 a reformation, reform of the educational system in the 1970s, continuing in the 80s. And of course the question is a little, maybe these people, uh, PISA were 15 years old, uh, so if they were 15 in 2000, what were they, 85? Were they or were they not the product of the system? Maybe they were. So the question is like how closely is it linked? But the reform also reflects maybe the wish to self-examine and to, 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 to do something, which is maybe also maybe a feature of the country. Okay, anyway, it shocked, um, it shocked Americans very much because Americans uh, have a different system and which seems to be very much de uh, dependent on standardized tests. And that means that teachers are kind of paralyzed by those standardized tests and they try to teach students so that they will pass those tests. And it is not a kind of education that generates at the bottom and like with students' interest and students' uh, capabilities and the dialogue between teacher and student, but it comes from somewhere else. Um, so, um, uh, so there is a big contrast. Anyway, what are those 10, uh, ten principles? And I am uh, quoting now more or less from this article. No standardized testing, okay? No requirement for teacher accountability. Nobody checking what the teacher is actually doing. It sounds terribly irresponsible. Uh, cooperation rather than competition. And back to basics. Starting a school at uh, seven, or seven years old, not earlier, okay? And, uh, 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 and then uh, nine years of compulsory school until the age of 16 and no compulsory school after that. Um, Providing um, practical opportunities when you get to high school, but you don't have to do a, like all, uh, only a university track. There is a parallel track, but you can switch between the two. Starting school in the morning, not very early, but after nine o'clock. Uh, long breaks between classes, outdoor activities. Um, uh, that's a number seven, eight. Consistent instruction from the same teachers. You get to know your teacher, the teacher gets to know you over a period of five, six years, um, and which develops trust and, uh, and, and understanding. Uh, and also where students can get uh, personal uh, atten attention. Long recesses, uh, kind of breaks, 15 to 20 minutes. And for teachers, a place to relax between classes uh, and less homework uh, and outside work. And then before, what are these ba basic, back to basics? Basics is 
free school meals for all students, uh, easy access to health care, psychological counseling. So it's really uh, targeted, targeting individual students uh, uh, who may have problems and helping them. Um, and uh, yeah, an individualized guidance. Okay, and then there have been some, of course, uh, questions like what is this based on, what, how does it work? <coughs> and it's, we, we can say that all political parties in, in Finland support this. So it is a kind of general take. And it's a general investment in the people. It's a value choice by, by the state. Uh, uh, let's see where I was going to go. And uh, what is special about this, I think, is that the teacher self uh, concept as teachers is tied in deeply with the success of their students. They are high professionals, these teachers. They are highly regarded socially. They have master's degrees, which are very competitive actually, uh, because uh, there are people who love to be teachers who actually become teachers, and they want to be successful. Um, and they are highly regarded socially. So that's very important, of course. Um, and, uh, uh, and now we get to the interesting point that we got from Stefan Brunhuber and also other people, that there are many layers of, uh, uh, many reasons why students learn or don't learn. And Brunhuber already at the Rome conference was telling us that a great part of student success is not what they learn, but it is do they have a, a friend in the class. Okay, and other aspects are things like, do you get food? So there are lots of exter externalities that are important, which is, sounds almost ridiculous. And now we've heard that even those are not enough, but there are other kind of totally non-cognitive, or like no, uh, not very clearly identifiable factors that we have to track. Uh, but I believe that uh, there is some kind of, this teacher education in Finland is based on uh, uh, on research, it's a scientific, and I think they are actually tracking all this stuff. The idea of serving food is already good, uh, I think. So, uh, so there can be some core values, uh, and it's, a, it's, it's an expensive decision. On the other hand, if you factor in, in the total economic calculation, that people who drop out of school maybe end up in, ye in, in, in Yale or jail or in the, stri on the streets, and other kinds of dysfunctional things, maybe it is just the right thing to do. So I, I think I'm rather defensive of this. Okay. 